Hey everybody, this is Austin, the Best I Can Afford Antiques channel. Uh, you know, always trying to show you something neat. Something, uh, I tried to say neat and new at the same time, kind of said newt. <laughs> always trying to show you something new. Various other aquatic reptiles, I believe you'd refer to as amphibians. <laughs> <I'm just laughs> oh, we're starting off strong tonight. Alright, I'm going to show you something today that uh, hopefully you've never seen before. And I think, I think I might be right about that, okay? We've got a fair variety of what are called Edison Records and some other companies. So uh, these are cylindrical records and these were invented in 1888, I do believe. So I don't know if you know too much about Thomas Edison. Um, he gets a lot of credit for a lot of things. He did a lot of things. He um, improved on a lot of things. He commercialized a lot of things. But he was maybe not a great guy. He, um, he appears to have stolen and worked with other people's patents and stuff pretty frequently. Um, just all sorts of stuff like that, really. And there's quite a bit of... Uh, Quite a bit of animosity related to uh, how much credit Edison gets versus how much work he actually did. So, uh, so in 1877, Thomas Edison is credited with having invented the phonograph. Which, you know, if you've read some stories, you probably won't give Thomas Edison too much credit for having solely invented anything. Because he was a bit of a bit of a thief it seems so anyway um, let's uh let's make sure we see everyone here right so um we've got some Edison records um, so this type of cylindrical record I believe was invented in 1888 well somebody else invented it and then um you know so Edison's have, uh, credited having invented the uh, phonograph, which kind of read like tin foil um, strips or plates. So it was um, it was a pretty inferior thing, and it was kind of considered a um, uh, like a like a curiosity more than like anything useful or anything. So um, that's a bit better. So. What did they do? So he invented it, you know, again, taking that with a bit of a grain of salt. He invented it in 1877, and then um, he just kind of left it alone. And then in 1888, somebody invented... Um, <laughs> I'm sorry, one of my friends just messaged me and it showed me the notification and threw me off. Um... In uh, 1888, someone invented this cylindrical type record, and then all of a sudden Edison went right back into business doing phonograph stuff um, in 1888 and <laughs> came out with a bunch of cylindrical records. You know, just just happened to uh, be his year for that. So, you know, you know, kind of maybe looks like he rushed in right at the beginning of somebody else's business and... Uh, reclaimed his own fraction of that but I don't really know too much about these now I read that these are worth like one to three dollars which seems crazy to me I would pay five dollars just to have something this old in my house now the Edison record company of this uh, type of record went out of business in 1929 so none of these can be uh, younger than 90 years old <clears throat> So here we are, I mean, the Edison Blue Amber record. And it looks like that one's actually all sealed up. Oh, no, it's missing the top of the lid. You see the rim for the lid is still there. And then we should look at one of these at least. Take it out very carefully. You know, I think I, I, think I need to... So these originally would have been wax, and then I do believe uh, the Edison Record Company came up with the uh, idea to make them out of plastic. 
So yeah, that's just, that's what a hundred year old record looked like. Isn't that pretty neat? It almost looks like concrete or something on the inside. I don't really know. It kind of feels like concrete too. So that's pretty weird. I'm sure these are very fragile. So I'm going to very carefully. You know, I don't know. This says, oh wow. Oh wow. You guys want to read this with me? This says, the right of the people to rule Theodore Roosevelt. Oh my goodness, is this a presidential speech from Theodore Roosevelt? I genuinely, genuinely had no idea. But as far as I can tell, I'm going to look at this in real life, as far as I can tell, this thing appears to be actually in perfect condition. I swear on everything, I've never looked at these until just now. I'm going to put this so gingerly back in this case and not touch another thing on it. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Okay, let's just, just in case that's some sort of a historically important speech or something. Um, okay, okay. I mean, maybe there's a million of those. There might be, I don't know. Still, I'm not going to toss it around, am I? When you and I were young, uh, July 29th, uh, 1902. So this is a 119 year old record. Maggie Coombs. And this is, uh, <clears throat> Oh, okay, so this is, um, oh, <laughs> never mind. I thought it was a generic case for any sort of these tube records, so that's fine. Never mind. Four-minute Oxford cylinder record. I suppose I kind of have to take these out of this, don't I? Like, to check on the condition of the actual record. It doesn't look like they're, uh, doesn't look like they're scratched up or anything. I don't see any real damage or cracks or anything on this one. Obviously, condition will be important if people want to play them, but I mean, I would think that these would value at least five dollars, maybe ten dollars, just as a, just as a decorational item. I mean, really, I would pay ten dollars to have an antique record on my, on my shelf. I'm a big fan of music, though, and I'd love to find like a, really cool old song or something, like a, old chunk of coal. You guys ever heard that really old song? I know a bunch of really old songs. So I'm just an old chunk of coal, hey lord. But I'm gonna be a diamond someday. You don't care. You don't care about the music I listen to. Whatever. What does that say? Flanagan on a farm. Huh. Well, I just don't know. There's a bunch of, like, there's a bunch of old, like, dirt and stuff on these. Uh, well, not really the other two that we've looked at, but this one. Edison Blue, Blue Amber record. Picture of the man himself on the back there. I don't know if we'll be able to get into that close enough for you to read that. That's very small print bit of glare. I wonder if we can reduce that a bit. Mm, I don't know. I don't know if we'll be able to read that. A bit scuffed up too. Another Edison Blue Amber. It says something about Ellison. Now I know there was a while there that they didn't put the artist's name on records and stuff, so so these might be a little bit older than the very first ones. I think maybe like 1910 or something they started putting uh, putting the artist's name on the records. Man, my camera is just insanely messed up trying to look down this dark tunnel <laughs> and read the print. Who puts me in my little bed? Ada Jones. I don't know you, Ada Jones, but it's a very handsome record. I can see that that's a 
That's a blue plastic on this record. Okay, what do you say we just leave it in there? Oh, a little thingy came out with it. Okay, it's just a little cap, I think. Oh, you know what? That might that might actually be the cap for the other side. Let me see if uh, let me see if that works. Um, sort of. It looks like the looks like the bottom actually came out of this one, but but that's fine. At least it included it. Are you guys bored? I'm sorry if I'm boring you. Have I given you facts about these things yet? <laughs> I never pay attention to what I'm saying. I just say things. They just roll right out of me. It's as if the Lord was speaking through me. Probably, probably not the Lord, if it was anybody. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, so there's a better picture of the man. Um, trademark Thomas Edison, 1903. It says 1900 on the, I assume just for the, um, the cases design. I wonder if we can get this one out of here without stressing it out. Yeah, it looks that way. <clears throat> you can see the ripples a little bit better on this one. I wonder if this wasn't one of the firster ones. Isn't that neat? If you guys don't think these are neat, you can go jump in a pond. <laughs> no, I don't do that. It's so cold outside. <laughs> don't, don't do it. Noisy Bill. Banned. Panded. These are patented. Don't do it. So you guys actually still watch my videos, huh? That's cool. I mean, that's nice of you, really. <laughs> obviously, obviously just trying to be nice to somebody. He's a devil in his own hometown. Harlan. 1902. I mean, that's super cool. These really are like 120 year old records. You know, you know, just to point out like how crazy time is and like how crazy our planet has been and will always be. Uh, 1902, you know, people in Japan that were making my cloisonne plates could have had one of these phonographs playing these records while they were creating cloisonne. I mean, isn't, isn't that wild? Like, to think about the things that, you know, because trade had opened up over there, the things that could have happened and could have been included in their daily lives, and, and vice versa, you know? Like, don't forget that just because Cloisonne came over here doesn't mean, like, Edison Records didn't go over there. So, I mean, it's really, like, a mind-blowing thing to think about, uh, to think about what time contains and the mysteries and weirdness that it has just hidden away all over it. Did that get too, too, uh, metaphysical? <laughs> I want to love you, etc. <laughs> I, <laughs> I can only imagine what the etc. <laughs> That's the most polite way of ever saying, uh, I've ever heard of somebody saying, you know, let's get rowdy. <laughs> Notice, no license whatever is granted to anyone to use this. Good, stop it. No license whatever is granted to anyone to use this patented record for making duplicates, nor for any other purpose except the reproduction of sound upon an Edison phonograph. Hmm. 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 So this is a slightly later one, because that one says 1910 right there. In 1914. Oh, maybe the ones with the uh, bigger grooves are actually earlier, or I mean later records. I don't know. Helen, Helen Clarkey. Van Brunt. I started the wrong way, I'm sorry. When I'm gone, you'll soon forget. Jeez, self-esteem. Yeah. Why don't you cry about it? This one's really cool. I like this Columbia record. Makers of famous Columbia records. Yeah, 
That makes sense, doesn't it? The Columbia Phonograph Company also makes Columbia Records? Yeah, you wouldn't really have to say the second Columbia, would you? Talking machine record, extra loud, high speed. Oh, you know what? I think I bought this one for the box. I think I had seen inside of it, and it was just the remnants of one of these. But actually, that's a pretty neat little thing, too. And we can look at how these were made, and it just looks like a fat piece of plastic, you know? It's not just plastic. There's some type of uh, special plastic, obviously. But... but yeah, I like seeing little mysteries like that revealed. <clears throat> Like I saw a broken open piece of cloisonne one time and I was like, oh, that's how they do that. And now I never want to see it again, like just for the record. So yeah, Edison at least stopped making these in uh, 1929. The company was completely defunct, so. So these are at least 90 years old if you see them. And sometimes up to, uh, let's do quick math. Um, 133 years, I think. What did I say? 1888. This specific type of record was invented. So yeah, 2021 right now. Feel free to uh, watch my videos in the future and have your mind blown. <laughs> Band Coronation March. I am super interested in this Teddy Roosevelt record. So I think we'll we'll research that more. The right of the people to rule. O'Doyle rules. Theodore Roosevelt. Roosevelt rules. Teddy out. This is Austin, the Best Second 40 Antiques channel. I hope you've enjoyed this little video about something that I didn't really know existed until I found them. So, so yeah, I hope you guys uh, learned something and you thought this was neat. And uh, obviously these would have played just like a record. You know, it would have spun while the needle moved along it. And, uh... And yeah, that's how these work. <laughs> this is Austin of the Best Second of 40 Antiques channel. I really hope, I really hope at least one day somebody's like, hey, you taught me something. And, uh, you know, that'll make every single one of these videos worth it. I love you guys. Best Second of 40 Antiques channel.